All right, what's going on, everyone? Um, just want to make a quick video lesson. Uh, I want to start with uh, from from Friday, a uh, trade I took on Works. Um, <clears throat> it was a breakout play over. What is this? Three twenty. Um, I I was playing it a little too early. Was buying in on some of these dips in here, and I added in some of these dips, and then it just failed and cracked, so I had to cut it. Um, just too early in the day, had a nasty double top there. Um, volume really faded. I should have been a little bit more paid a little bit more attention to that. Um, and it hurt because it did come back and get out a quick squeeze, basically triple top there, and then faded. But then it never it failed to break down, and I think that's a, a huge thing um, here in, in the in the morning. Or over, you know, over, over just playing it over the weekend, holding overnight. Uh, I definitely not ideal to hold overnight since the breakout kind of failed and got stuffed. Um, so it's not something that I would personally hold overnight. Um, I would like it better if it broke out and you know, at, we'll say it double top did what it did here, came back, broke out on more volume, and then failed to break down, holding the breakout level. I could see that for a good overnight for a potential gap. Um, but this just failed to break down, you know, it would have been nice if you would have kept an eye on it, you know, when some volume came in and it broke out again, um, or even past these highs here in the three forties, low three forties could have been a pre-market buy, but I don't trade pre-market or after hours really. Um, so it was just on watch today, uh, cause it did get the gap and confirm the breakout, got a really nice gap. Uh, and it was testing 52 week highs here at 480. So. I let it do its thing in the morning um, and then it was grinding back. And so I took some shares I took a, and, and this was me taking too much size. Um, I was really excited about that. It gapped up that it confirmed the breakout this morning. Um, I really liked that. It was testing those 52 week highs. I liked that it tested it in the morning on volume and then it just had a really nice, base here like four on you know, the low fours and then it started to really grind back on steady volume so i was really excited about this and i think i was way overly excited um i took 50 shares here as a starter like 490 um took another 50 like 484 and then took some more in the 470s when it looked like it was bouncing here i ended up taking 100 shares and i took another 100 shares in the, in the like a 465 um and i was really just looking you know there's there was no real key support level i was looking at besides like 450 ish um and that was just too far away for for, for me especially since I had buys up here in the four nineties. So it was just really my fault for buying it too early. Um, and if I was going to buy shares, it needs to be so small to where like just 10 shares, you know, 10 shares here. You know, if these were all 10 share buys, this, this panic, it would have meant nothing to me. Um, but I was buying 50, 50, a hundred, a hundred, and then we got a nice perk right back above the breakout level. I was like, okay, we're looking good. Um, I was busy at work. And so I didn't have my stop in. Um, I did have it here, you know, when I finally couldn't put in a bottom here and it was bouncing, I was going to use four, six, I was using, going to use 460 as my cut and canceled that, my, my stop order and just put in an alert for that low. And, um, was just kind of doing my thing at work and all of a sudden I get the alert and I, and I look at my phone and I'm, and I'm basically down almost 10%, you know? Uh, yeah, 10%. And so that, that really hurt. Uh, it was like $150 loss, like 148. So definitely a way bigger loss than I like to take. Uh, and that's why I think it's so important to take small size in the beginning you know, get some feelers, um, in there and see how, and just kind of see how the stock moves. You know, if I was, like I said, if I was taking 
just five, 10 shares, like super small, you know, it doesn't have to be big. And I'm just saying, I'm just saying five, 10 shares. Cause that's, I, I'm trading with like ridiculously small size. So just whatever size is comfortable for you to where you could just put some, some shares in there and let it sit. And no matter what it did, well, no matter what it did, no matter if you came back, look down, I looked at, look at your laptop or your phone or whatever you're, you're looking at it on and you're down 20%, you're like, oh, fuck, 20%. Yeah, that sucks, but the dollar amount is so small that it, it, it doesn't affect you. You know, it doesn't it doesn't, doesn't get your emotions going. You don't want to get emotional. You want to keep your emotions under control. So if I had really small size, getting a starter here, 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 and then got stopped out, or even just had to sell like I did down here, it, it, would've, it wouldn't have, it would have meant nothing to take that small loss. And it was just kind of a live and learn experience. But instead I, I just took too big a size, um, 50 shares, 50 shares. And instead of kind of just cutting it when it kept making lower lows, um, cause I always could have rebought. It's still small enough size to where I can just rebuy. So there was no reason for me to, to, I, and I got emotional at the 50 shares, the 50 shares. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to make it a hundred shares now, a hundred shares. Cause it's got to be putting in a bottom somewhere here pretty soon. It's got a lot of support. Um, it, it is a 52 week breakout. It's a low float, uh, right sector. So this was looking pretty good. I was expecting, you know, but still I should have waited for some higher highs, um, the breakout to, to hold and confirm add on the high of daybreak. Like there was all, there was more, there's more to it. Instead of just me buying it on the downtrend, I need to be buying it on the uptrend back when it's confirming. Um, and then I'll have better risk because, because then I can be like, okay, that 463, that is now, that is now the, my cut, you know, it is now confirmed to bottom made higher lows. You add into the higher lows with risk, risking that bottom that is put in at 463. Instead, I did the opposite, added into the lower, into the lower lows, and then it just got shit on and I had to just eat the loss. So that's something I'm really just trying to work on is just really small size get the feeler for it when it confirms and i have really good risk reward i'll be able to size up accordingly so that's that that's works that was my day for you uh, and friday so the only other one that i did trade was cxd cxdc and it's a bad sushi play um, it's just funny. I was just looking at a stocks to trade post on Instagram and it was, a, it was a picture of moldy sushi and it just cracked me up. So, um, this is a bad sushi play. And what all that means is that, let me go back even further, just a nasty downtrending chart. And this is nasty. Okay. That's not what you want to see when you're a long buyer, when you're, a, when you're a long in a stock or you want to go long in a stock, the best thing is to have little to, or to no overhead resistance here. There's so much overhead resistance that it's just nasty. Um, the only reason why I'm playing, I played it is because it had the gap down nasty washout and we're bouncing back on strong volume which and these kind of plays have been kind of hot the past couple of weeks. Um, it's something that me and the guys have definitely been seeing is these just nasty downtrending charts and they're getting nice bounces on volume. Um, some of them, some of them trying to fill the gap. So uh, it's not an ideal play, but these are kind of, are kind of in play recently. So this has been on watch um, the past week, ever since it bounced up to one on that nice volume day. So, just trying to fill the gap. Uh, nice breakout over one, which is one dollar whole whole number key level. Um, I let it do its thing on the morning, and I did get a hundred shares here at exactly a dollar, and we got a little perk, double topped, quick little washout, bounced right back. Um, I didn't have a stop in yet because. 100 shares, I was probably just going to risk this 91, 92, yeah, 92-ish level. Um, 
and I, I just had some alerts on it. I wasn't too worried about it. It was only 100 shares. That's the best part about sizing down uh, when you're taking just your starter. It was such small size that I wasn't worried about it. If it cracked all the way back down to 90, you know, like high 80s, I, I wasn't going to, it wasn't going to, wasn't going to like fuck me um, physically or emotionally. So it was nothing I was worried about. I just had some alerts set and I was good. If it pulled a works, whatever. Um, and then it made a nice little higher low here. And so I got 500 shares at a dollar, exactly a dollar. And uh, it was making me nervous. We got a nice little perk back and I was like, okay, here we go. See if we could break high of day. Nope, all the way right back down. Nice triple bottom though. Um, and bounce back. And I was just kind of waiting. Volume was fading, but it was holding up. And I'm just like, I'm just waiting for that quick move. Just a quick move. It's a bad sushi play, so I'm not looking to hold this overnight. I'm not looking to stay long. Um, I'm not looking for a huge move. I'm just looking for like my quick 10%. So uh, this after hours move here really kind of scared me a little bit. Uh, but then again, I was just like, I'm only, you know, I'm just gonna keep an eye on it. If it starts to really fade uh, back down to the, into the mid 70s, uh, I'll just cut it. And uh, a nice little perk and we broke high of day after hours i just sold at 111 just took my quick 10 percent, and i was gone and that was basically it um just failed to break down after hours i had this little crack back down to support here 98 held and uh i was watching it like a hawk this whole time uh, i was at work but i was just trying to keep an eye on it every chance i could and so Really just wanted to make sure it wasn't just going to fade into after hours. And so once it kind of held here and we got that perk back up into the low uh, ones, I was like, okay, I'm going to let this do this thing, do its thing for a little bit. Check it in a minute. Came back. It was uh, like, it was at like 111. And I was like, okay, perfect. Slapped it. Waited a couple minutes, got filled. And then that was that. So just a quick play. It's not ideal. But uh, just going to take it. Got to trade better for sure. Uh, just felt pretty sloppy with these breakout plays. And they're my favorite plays too. And I just, I've been so just kind of butthurt that I've been just trading them like complete ass. So it's definitely something I've been working on. Because I, I know how to trade it, you know. Like the, the my, my ad here, 500 shares, that's not a bad ad. When it made that higher low, held the breakout level. You got a clear risk now. Um, I should have added more, honestly, but nice little move, took it, and uh, just need to do better with plays like works. Smaller size. Once it confirms, I have a clear risk. If I have the risk is, is good enough, I can size up, and uh, yeah, it's just way easier, way easier, a lot more comfortable. So that's the, that's the key lesson here today on how to play breakouts so i hope it made sense hope you guys enjoyed and i'll catch you guys on the next one peace